client that brought in a printer and most printers in repair stores do not actually get fixed. They usually check in, we tell you there's an error, and then we tell you to go somewhere else, AKA Best Buy, electronic store, buy a new printer. I'd say a good seven out of 10, but people don't understand that good seven out of 10 need to be replaced rather than fixed. But mainly it's like Epson, HP, all these companies trigger a fuse that says, hey, you're using an aftermarket inkjet, et cetera, something was done wrong, and it voids your warranty with the manufacturer, which is funny but also really shady and a lot of people are trying to fight it, but it's not really my job. I'm just getting paid $40 to shake it, just shake it. Seriously, is that it? That's it. You just shake it? Yeah, because if anything seems like it's rattling, okay, it's broken. If it's not rattling, okay, you triggered X, Y, and Z. I tell them up front, like, hey, you don't want to check this in. You want to buy a new one? Oh, no, 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 we're going to try and fix it. I mean, honestly, new ones aren't even that expensive. That's what I thought. But here like we are. Like, I got mine off Amazon. I just keep it in my office. And I buy the bigger HPs because then I get a five-year warranty, uh, replacement warranty if it triggers the, the bullshit with the ink, which is good. Dude, we were we, – I was up in New York when I told you I was up there for, for FEMA. Yeah. And we get called out to this uh, nursing home for a confused patient. That's all they tell us. And we're like, all right, you know, maybe they're diabetic or maybe they're having a stroke or something. And we get there and – me and my buddy Jared uh, start, you know, doing our assessment, taking care of the patient, getting report from the. Uh, Hold on, somebody's at my house. Some weird fucking guy was just at my front door. Is it the Latter Day Saints guy? Some guy is picking up trash in front of my house. Even my cat is like hanging out with him. What the fuck is going on? Oh, it's Monday. God, I forgot. I'm like, I, this is not the normal guy. This is the guy from the hotel with the garbage that's cleaning up. Okay. I'm like, what oh. is he doing picking up garbage? It's Monday. That's why I'm used to it Wednesday. Somebody comes and picks up your garbage? No, because they they empty the trash from the hotel across the street. And when they do that on every Tuesday, Wednesday, they send somebody around to clean up what's overspilled. Mm. Because it always blows into our yard. So I was like, okay, that's a, a nice thing to do. I appreciate it. But it's Monday. Tuesdays when trash comes... Why are you here today? So I was like, what the fuck? It's Monday, so they shouldn't be here. Right. Um, but back to your story, sorry. No, you're good. I, I'd probably be the same way. I'd be like, what's this guy doing in my yeah, front yard? Right, right, right. Um, so we're, we're doing our assessment on this patient at the nursing mm. home, and I start asking the, the charge nurse. I'm like, hey, you know, so like, what's this patient's history? What's going on? They're like... Oh yeah, they have um, they have dementia or Alzheimer's, one of those. And I'm like, and we got called because they're confused. And I'm like, yeah, well, it's kind of like gonna happen with yeah. with those two uh, diseases. And they're like, well, yeah, but they're also really dehydrated. I'm like, okay. So I go do my tests and stuff, and I'm like, well, you know sure they're probably a little dehydrated and i'm like well have you guys tried to like help them like drink you know instead of us just stabbing them first yeah. or anything and they're like well you know whenever we would try they just don't want anything to do with it and me and my partner we take turns we like take the cup of water out of her her line of sight mm -hmm. and then we're like hey you know here's here's this water you ever got to drink some and then she drinks some she gives it back, and then I hand it to my partner. And you'd, you'd have to trick them to drink water? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. It's just like that out of sight, out of mind. Like, if you try to force it upon them, just like, hey, you need to drink this, it's not going to work. It's more of like kind of a coerce uh, thing with them to, to help get them what they need. I wonder if that would work on me. Not that I'm confused. I just don't drink enough water. Just, <laughs> hey, you forgot to take some. Just hire somebody specifically to walk around and be like, you forgot to drink this. Hey, you forgot to drink that. My daughter texts me now. She's like, drink water, daddy. She's seven. <laughs> you can put that in your, for your new employees, for your employees. Just like, yeah, you have to trick me to drink water. Well, it's technically my daughter is an employee here. Nice. It's a tax deduction. Yeah. yeah. So as long as she works four hours a week, she can get paid her paycheck and boom. And a part of that goes into uh, basically a market account that trades makes money off of. Uh, I saw it on TikTok. I don't know if it'll actually, till the end of the year, be in the tax code as equally as they said, but it's one of those things like, all right, you can pay your kid up to 1200 bucks a month. 
All right, let's do that. Let's try. 600 goes to them, which really is going to us anyway, but we buy, they get everything they want. 600 goes to futures. All right, we'll trade in futures. There you go. Uh, the idea being if from 7 to 18, she'd have like 5 million or some crazy shit is what Instagram said. Let's find out. Dang. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be pretty sick. Yeah, imagine sitting around for 11 years giving $600 to an account and then being a multimillionaire. Like, that would really happen. I guess there's only one way to find out. It happens a lot, but nobody is as consistent for, what is that, 120 months to make a deposit. Nobody. So we were talking, what happens if you don't get that contract and you don't kill yourself? For legal reasons, that's a joke. Yeah. So he said if he doesn't get this contract in Baghdad, I would probably go with that. What would you do for work, like, realistically? I'd probably just find another contract, honestly. Um, There's many of them. There's, there's a few. I subscribe to a job board called Beyond the Meat Wagon. It's for, like, first responders who actually want to be paid what they're, like, worth. And I'm going to look at this. Yeah. And it's called, like, the worst responders. <laughs> Beyond the Meat Wagon. Yeah. Started in 2019 by two veteran workers. Fire EMS uh, exists to serve those who put... Holy shit. Men, women, babies, gear, articles, med, job, board. Casualty care. Do, 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 do. You have to pay mm-hmm. $12. <laughs> that's hilarious. But you find some really interesting jobs. Like, that's where I found quite a few. I think that's where I found one of my Oregon contracts during COVID. And then the Baghdad one that I'm applying for right now. And then this some one other says, ones. landed an easy contract doing COVID swabs and made over 10K in one month. That's just for an EMT basic. You know how much an EMT basic gets paid here? No. Like 12, 12 bucks. What does it take to get licensed to be an EMT? It takes about like three months. So for three months, damn. Just people don't care to do it or follow through? It's just a turnover rate. Sometimes we get like students that once, you know, we they see what we deal with. They're like, yeah, I'm not going to do this for $12 an hour. They can get paid more at McDonald's, honestly. It's 15 starting in California, and now they're moving it up to $20 minimum. They just passed that whole restaurant workers make 20 mm-hmm. So it used to be the fight for 15 That was four years ago. They just started the fight for 15 and now it's a fight for $20 because 15 wasn't fucking good enough to ruin the economy anyway. You cocksuckers already got it up to $15. I remember paying people $11 an hour, and they were grateful. They were happy. And that was a lot of money to the seven twenty-five an hour that the minimum wage was. Mm-hmm. And I think minimum wage here is like seven fifty. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So we're still paying twelve fifty. So like, ha, huh, fuck you all, $20 McDonald's workers. You're 17 years old <laughs> trying to... It's not enough. It's not enough. If, if McDonald's at $20 an hour is not enough for you, you have the wrong idea in life. Your parents coddled you way too much. But don't some things have to adjust for, like, inflation and yeah. housing and But all then it's an Ouroboros where you're just eating the tail because that inflation comes from the cost of paying people on small businesses and restaurants and whatnot. And then boom, you're just right back at paying for goods and services that are now costly because you had more money to spend because you're making more and then the demand to the people is more. So all these other things are more and then you're back there and then the business has to fucking pay less, but they can't pay less because now inflation. So they got to pay more, so they pay less people and then because they're less staffed, less demand, less output, and then it's like, but everyone wants more money because nobody's making enough money and everything's super expensive. And then we're back to bitching that the world doesn't want to fucking like me. world doesn't like you. Get over it. Here's some advice from dad. I'm just, come on. A little closer. Yeah, stop. Listen. Nobody gives a shit. Move on. Have a nice day. Go get him, champ. How's business for you? You know, it was very slow last, what, week before last? It was like a couple hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there, you know, individual jobs. And then I was like, all right, cool, we got a lot done. As soon as we prepped everything we needed, and I was like, yeah, we're going to go full force into doing all the videos I want to do and all the free time. And then I was like, <laughs> you thought, you really thought free time was a thing? Oh, let me tell you. Now, more work. And then... I, I, did I mention on the last podcast that I had a guy who was delivering slabs or wood? Yeah. So I had gotten all that wood, and I he ditched me Friday. He didn't show up. 
Just no call, no show, no nothing. Oh, so you didn't get it? I didn't get it. And so Saturday, I'm like, okay, noon, you know, he rescheduled Saturday at 11. I'll be there in an hour. I'm going to pack this up. Boom, boom, boom. Then he ditched me. No call, no show. It's like, okay, I got fucked twice. Shame on me. I must have liked it. Sunday, after losing $1,000 at the casino, Saturday night, because my wife told me to go because they were doubling uh, free play, but they didn't, and then there was much drama, I did win two jackpots, but I put it all back and then lost my money. I'm an addicted gambler. I keep saying I'm going to stop. As long as there's money in the account, it's not like I'm, you know. But we're officially negative again from all the money. We lost one. We've lost all the winnings. We're officially negative again. It happens. But uh, so he calls me again. He's like, all right, I got it. And I was like, well, I just spent all my money at the casino last night because I thought you just weren't coming because I had taken out money for him. I'm like, all right, let me go get some money, and then I'll grab this stuff. And then he's like, well, I got this table. And this sled. I was under the impression it was a flattening sled with a router. How much do you think a flattening sled with a 5 by 8 table would cost? Here? Just like yeah. handmade? Handmade. Part uh, of the board. Was like 300 350 Yeah, 300 bucks. That's what he offered. No router. The sled is broken. The table legs are broken. He drops it off. I'm like, all right, yeah, I don't think I want it. He's like, yeah, nope. Okay. He just leaves it there? Just leave it. I don't get my money back, though. <laughs> Jesus. So I, I spent 800 bucks on the wood, basically. So it was one of those things where I, I got everything. I was dealing with putting that all together, and now I have a bunch of wood to hopefully make some fun things out of. There's a lot of cedar, and people fucking love cedar out here for some reason. I'm mm-hmm. going to try some joinery with that. Uh, it's very long pieces of cedar. They're almost like three quarter inch thick. So two and three quarters or three quarter boards. I don't know what the fucking terminology is, but it's basically like two and a half inch pieces of thickness. Mm -hmm. So I can't make boards out of those or like charcuterie or anything. I've got to chop that up and make benches maybe. I don't know. You can make some benches? They're fucking long. Like I can make some really nice benches. You just make stacks on stacks of charcuterie boards? I could if I had a bandsaw because at that thickness, charcuterie board, imagine trying to carry around a, like, charcuterie board. (laughs) That'd be heavy. Market it for the super fancy and wealthy, just like, you want a a real charcuterie board? Mm -hmm. Get it from me, Christopher Love. Yeah, it's Love's Design Studios charcuterie board. It'll break a... Hell a bit, or I don't know what you would cut on it. I've seen bigger ones on TikTok and whatnot that are pretty thick butcher blocks. Mm-hmm. I could make butcher blocks out of that, yeah, but not charcuterie boards. Or the uh, the working man's charcuterie board built tough. I could just brand it with a Ford logo. Yeah. Built Ford tough, yeah. and then leave it on the fucking road dying. Built love tough. Early. What happens if I put these on? She wants to get on the po- podcast and tell her story one of these days. Yeah. 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 I do get I do give IVs to myself. You do administer it yourself? Yeah. Just I, I used to shoot fentanyl. Are you allowed to do that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm a medically trained professional. You technically it's not recommended to do to yourself. Self- and you know. Have you ever been sold really stupid fake door to door? healthcare or medical services or like that coupon book when you were a kid that said, hey, you could save money and make money and be not an asshole. Yeah. Yeah. We just had one of those. (laughs) Did you buy what she was selling you? Fuck no. (laughs) No. Uh, So Globe is a industry that sells you fake healthcare coverage. You go to the hospital, you have an EMT visit, you have uh, anyone come to your house or you go to the hospital and anything happen, x-ray, cardiogram, whatever, We'll pay based on the treatment you get. You go for an x-ray, we pay you $1,800. One x-ray. Well, cost of x-ray is higher than $1,800. You know, okay, so you go into EMT ride, we pay you $5,000. Okay, I'm like, so I could just go on an EMT ride every fucking day with my VA insurance and just say my heart, you know, I can make a shit ton of money. She's like, we do not advise on that. I'm like, well then your fucking system needs to have a cap. They're betting against sickness. That's the idea. Hey, pay us $140 a month, and if you get sick, we'll pay you per sickness you get or treatment you get. 
Really? And I'm like, that's great. No. Um, also not legal. Right. It's, it's a betting. Like, she's like, well, depending on which one you pay to insure against. So if you insure against diabetes, you insure against X, Y, and Z, you can get paid a three to one, a five to one, a 10 to one. And I'm like, yeah, no, that, that's God awful and horrible. Also, who in their right fucking mind will pay for that? And they're like, here's all of our firsthand uh, customers saying how great it was. And I'm like, these people probably have the shittiest health care and want to spend the $25 a month you're offering at the base level to make 2500 But in reality, it's always costing more than what you're paying. It was the, it's, it's bad. So she was like, oh, you know, come back after you do some research. I don't need to do any more research. As soon as I saw BBB degrade like fucking ratings for their business, E, F, G, horrible. Mm -hmm. No thank you. Sure, they've probably helped out 1% one, 1 of their customers, but 99 fucking percent say either your job sucks or you're ripping people off. Even you don't look like you like your job, so why are you going to come try and sell me? Mm -hmm. Like, did the NFIB guy come to your store? Mm -hmm. National NFIB? Bureau of something, blah, blah, blah. How oh. funny would that be to rent, like, the space in front of my business, like that little cubby. Yeah. And it's repair and IVs, you know? That's the thing. I need to get you popping on the lotion and, and the Botox. Botox, yeah. And Botox. And fillers. Dude, you know how much money you make? I'm telling you. We could, uh, we we could sell ass lotion. injection. Did you have a, buying that stuff is so expensive. I don't even know if I can do it. You can do it. I mean, I, it, it looks easy to do, and I can buy the meds for it. I can buy. I'll train, and I'll do it. Do you need an investor? Investor? Yeah. You want some lip fillers? I'm just... <laughs> I, I could get into the pharmaceutical field. You, you, get a, you, you could get a lot of fucking money from that. My wife's talking about doing Botox right now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah so we're, we're going to order it from China. And all the rich old, you know, women. The, the I'll just, wives. I'm just saying, I, I would absolutely do my own Botox at home, but <laughs> um, it's it's so fucking easy. There's, you know, if you're familiar with needles and how to administer a needle to a human body without harming somebody, it is easy. All you have to do is put a little marker. No. That's There's, what they did to me. That, yeah, you've gotten Botox before? No. Of course not. Okay. Man, uh, what a liar. Be gone. What a life. Yeah. What a life. So when do you want your IV? I oh. feel like now she owes me drinks. Not like oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Did you ditched him? Yeah. No, of course not. Yeah, she did. I was just not in the place. Hold on. Did you actually say yes to going to drinks? No. Yeah, she did. No, I did Alejandro. Uh, okay. Hey, I'm not a liar. Play that. I don't fit. Ale, Alejandro. Ale, Alejandro. Do what? I gotta go. All right. No, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll You're good. I'll see you tomorrow, and I don't. And you're fine. Don't feel bad. There ain't no shit here. Don't give no shit. I don't think bullying made me who I am. Because I was definitely bullied when I was, like, younger. Mm -hmm. But then I realized it's easier to be the bully than to be the bullied. I mean, it's always easier to be the bully. Yeah. But it's always easier to have no enemies. We don't I have, didn't have enemies. enemies. I was, dude, there was this time in high school. I was in this, like, clique of skater slash punk kids that weren't really punks that were just more like hang out have a good time do whatever we wanted every school flannels that's what it was flannel t-shirt and blue jeans i loved it were you a skater boy no i couldn't skate to save my life but my dad bought me a skateboard and i still fuck myself up whole other thing i love rollerblades but i didn't tell anybody that i was a fruit booter as they called it <laughs> is, is that what it was called yeah fruit booting you want to go fruit booting yeah <laughs> four wheels all different color Woo, you know my fucking friends <laughs> There was this, this click where Big T and a bunch of people were like almost like skinheads. They were really like, you don't mess with them, you don't talk to them, they just fuck anybody up. But my brother knew somebody from when we were like little, little kids that was in one of this group. And I went to say hi one day and then we just hit it off. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start hanging out with this really horrible group of people. And next thing you know, uh, they just fought this guy that they called him Cracker Face. Uh, because it was like it pox almost like he had really bad acne mm. and I remember doing the most ignorant and hateful thing went to Saturday school and he sat next to my girlfriend at the time Alicia and I think she uh, she's got like three kids life 
happy now. But uh, long story of Alicia. All of a sudden, this woman is talking to this dude that everyone's like, I hate. Everyone's supposed to hate. And I just remember like getting the... Uh, this is like my first bullying moment in high school. And so I remember getting the the gall to go up to him and be like, that's my girlfriend, just smack him around. This is sophomore year. I smacked the shit out of him in Saturday school and then threw him across the cafeteria, and I didn't stop. That was my problem, though. When I got angry, I didn't stop. Know your limits. Fucking stop. I got a five-day suspension. He got a one-day suspension. He didn't fucking do anything. Nothing. I don't even know why I'm telling the story. Horrible. I was a horrible kid. Horrible. Fought for a dollar. Yeah. Like, you'd pay me a dollar, I'd beat up your ex-boyfriend to hear whatever crackhead story about him. Me, he smacked me. He he called me bad names. Turns out half of them were innocent. Looking back, Amber Heard's life, you know. We all do stupid stuff when we're young. God, I just wanted to be liked and loved and, and, and win over my high school sweetheart, Devin. Everybody does when they're that young. Yeah, I won her, then I married her, and then she was psychotic. Yeah, thank God dodged a bullet there, didn't have a kid. Live and you learn. Dude, crazy stuff to be 33 now. Just looking back, back at all the shit, and I'm like, I don't regret a minute of it. But damn, it was a wild ride. 17 to 26. (laughs) (laughs) It was a damn nine years of my life. You say that's a wild ride and you still have so much more left. I'll be dead in the next six months. What do you mean? I'm terminal. What are you talking about? Not as long as I'm here. I know. He's like, I got you. Yeah, exactly. He's like, get me tied off, doc. (laughs) I don't know. My health, I'm always questioning. A uh, friend of my family just died. Uh, his name's Dennis. He was like the car guy growing up. When I got sober, I went to meetings with him and stuff. It was great. So we're going to be back in California next week. I don't know when his funeral is or if we're going to go. But his son, I haven't talked to him since the COVID crypto days. He, he was trading a lot of like Shiba and SRT and stuff like that. We'll see how that goes, but I hate funerals, man. Yeah. It's always so sad. Why can't it be one hooker, just a, a stripper or something? Like, give the man the final time. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, he had, he had cancer. He was terminal. He was a partier. He had his wife, his family. He loved her. But the stories in N.A. this man would tell. He was Tommy Lee in a small town. Have you seen the De- uh, the Detroiters? No. Used to be on Comedy Central. Um, there's this one episode where this lady dies, and in her funeral, it's, like, written in her last wishes that she wanted to be, like, posted up, drinking, smoking, like, a cigarette. I love you, you little bony bitch. How quickly did she die? This was her final wish. We respected it. Now just move on. Cigarettes, Fayo, and a Coney dog. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would, I, oh, no, 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 no. That's her last wish to be stuffed. Do that show, like, almost 100% of what they drink is Fago. And that's hilarious. I don't know if that's, like, a Detroit thing or not, but both of them are from Detroit. Um, Tim Robinson's dad worked at the, um, is it Chrysler that has the the plant up there in Detroit? Headquartered in Detroit, Michigan. Beverages product of the company brand is Fago or Fago Pop are distributed in Midwestern, Mid-Atlantic, and Central regions of the United States. Yeah, but those two actors, like, they they came from, like, middle class. Like, their their parents worked at the whatever. The factory. Yeah, whatever vehicle factory it, it's, it is in Detroit. And then I think one of their moms was, like, a nurse. How much does an administrative assistant make? 52. Okay. 52. All right, everybody. I appreciate you coming by. Like, comment, share. You can subscribe if you want to. There's more to come. I, I, I believe we're going to have Alejandro on here quite a few more times if he doesn't just ghost me. But I, I don't know. Whatever sto- toes I'm going to step on. We'll see you all next time on During Business Hours. Life can be super happy. Life can be super sad. I'm trying super hard to separate the good and bad. I go back to my future just to get to my past. But knowing me, my DeLorean will